Um, it always means a lot to have this time with the community that's around the world, engaged in studying our online uh, Resonance Academy Unified Science Unified Physics program, which um, is as most of you know that are here probably, but some of you may be new, is a free program that we have online at uh, resonancescience.org, going through uh, the Sims theory of resonance uh, of, of unified physics and um, with great contributions from William Brown and Ines Ergeneta. Ines just completed module seven, which reviews all of the papers since the uh, program first came out in 2014 that uh, Nassim and his colleagues have written. And that module is really packed with just an amazing amount of new information uh, since we first wrote the program. And then uh, module eight is in the works, I understand, Nassim, that will be related to the new paper that's yeah, really that's anticipated. Yeah, so exciting. Yeah, that's yeah. so exciting. Um, as well, we're, you know, we're working on the, on getting the course into audio form um, so that people can listen to it and it'll be easier. Hopefully um, we will we'll have uh, module eight in audio form. Um, it's gonna be harder for mod module eight because we're gonna require that people are following the equations of the paper so this module eight is addressing it's about a 200 page paper maybe mm -hmm. a little less now mm -hmm. um mostly equations so it's technical paper and module eight is going to address the technical paper in layman's terms so we're going to refer to equations mm -hmm. a lot that are in the paper that are the main equations uh that we can explain in terms of uh of um, the mechanics of what we are describing in this equation. So you won't need to understand mathematics to follow in module eight, uh, but you might learn some math on the, along the way mm -hmm. because we're gonna identify what each terms in the equations mean and how, like what we're describing and why we're describing it and how it works with all the rest of the stuff and uh, how it, you know, solve unification for scales, for constant constances and mm -hmm. forces, um, mm -hmm. and for conservation laws. Um, so that like, it's easy for people to follow. And it, um, you know, and it, it gives you the exact picture that we paint with the paper and mm -hmm. what it resolves and how it resolves it, what, mm -hmm. what um, supports it. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you know, it's both experimental and just consistency in the theory that supports mm -hmm. it. So there's both side and it's, it's uh, what I call in French, c'est béton, uh, which means it's, um, it's cement it's solid it's mm -hmm. like it, it's um there's actually very 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 little lateral moves you could do anywhere mm -hmm. um, meaning you know there's very little um uh vectors of freedom you know mm -hmm. um, yeah like it, speculative or something Right, it's, it's very because tight. any it's... variation anywhere modifies other, like it's all <laughs> unified, right? So, mm -hmm. and it's based on values, you know, that are empirical values, that is values that are measured in laboratory right. or observed. Um, in some cases, of course, measured in laboratory uh, with, you know, accuracy of 10 to minus 12 10 to minus 13 which means mm. you know a precision of points you know 13 <laughs> zeros you know um so that's cool the these kind of things um the reason it's beton the reason it's solid like cement um is because a theory that actually 
you know, would have cosmological implication that would nail these values at the quantum scale uh, that we measure with one value, like one constant or one value such as like the radius, the proton, uh, I'm sorry, the radius not known to that level of precision, but the mass, the proton or the, mm. you know, alpha, like the constants alpha or, you know, any other constant, like the Rydberg constant was, or the G factor, um, a, a theory that would nail, that, would, that has cosmological consequences and that would nail one of these constant with all the numbers mm. after the period, you know, mm. 12 of them, right um is already would be a remarkable theory right it would already be really really remarkable it would be a you know no novel you know mm -hmm. in many ways um mm -hmm. this one nails them all so, <laughs> you know mm. really um cool. so it, it's all it, it's like it's in another universe it's in another mm. place mm. and for the layman to understand that is really important because it tells you how you know how the universe is working at its most fundamental level um and uh so it's important for me that i'm able to like explain not only the mechanics with the words but that even the layman understand how the equations are talking about those mechanics um, so it, it's really, uh, it's really exciting, uh, that I'm able to do that because the equations at the end of the day, although there's a few thousands of them and there'll be a few millions of them by, you know, when all the implications of this will be explored that, you know, there's plenty more, mm -hmm. um, the, um, that, but but the basis is so simple it's so clear so simple that a layman somebody that's not familiar with mathematics and physics uh can follow the equation because it's a logical thought it's logical mm -hmm. from one end to the other there's there's no discontinuity you don't have to invent like really strange concept or really like 13 dimensions and ten, ter, you know of mm -hmm. uh, of string theories right you right. know you, you you don't have to do any of this there's no esoteric mathematics that are like very strange or you know very complex uh, matrices there's mm -hmm. you know there's relationship to matrices and complex mathematics that are already present for instance Einstein field equations or QCD and QED and so on. But, you know, we show clearly that these complex mathematics can be reduced to simple, you know, functions and fluid dynamics um, of space time and produce all the data and all everything we observe and, um, and do it very precisely without the need for like, um, tensor, you know, um, uh, calculus um, mm -hmm. or tensor equations that are, um, you know, um, like there is there's conclusions to tensor equations that are actually, you know, in vector calculus um, that are that are just as precise um, and actually much more clear in its mechanics. Um, and so it's, it's, um, so it's exciting to be able to like actually take something that is very fundamental and very advanced in physics and be able to actually describe it. Like literally I'm aiming for like a 10 year old reading module eight and mm. being able to follow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So they, which means that the conceptual uh, capability for somebody of that age is there in the simplicity of the theory. Uh, yes. Which because is really exciting. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you yeah. can literally explain, like, describe it like the water in your bath and yeah. you know, pulling the yeah. drain and wow. you know the dynamics of the fluid dynamics that are, that emerge from that you know gradient in the water and mm -hmm. exchange with the air and you know you can use analogies like that and you'll get all of the me mechanics we're describing sure sure um there's some great animations that can be created yeah. to tell the story yeah exactly yeah. and small films you know yeah. um yeah Great. You know, those but, uh, storytelling, you know, when people are yeah, doing yeah. it quick on the whiteboard kind of thing. Definitely. That would be fantastic for that. Yeah. And when you mention um, there's like the experimental basis as well as the, the theoretical, mm -hmm. are you are you referring to a, a prior experimentation of, of uh, what's been out there for a long time that supports it? Um, and or are you talking about your current experimentation? Is there any of thing? Oh, that, right. Uh, so I, I'm talking about historical measures historical, that have been yeah. done, okay, right? So, thought, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, all the constants in physics that we utilize in codata, for instance, you know, the Rydberg constants, alpha, right. um, you know, uh, the radius of proton, well, the mass of proton, the mass of the electron, the radius of the electron, you know, all these things that are thought to be fundamental constants. Some of them you know, that codata, that is the institute that gives the unit measure, like official units measure fundamental for physics, uh, you know, some of these values are considered, are used as exact values like H bar, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in codata. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just changed in 2018, which is mm -hmm. was a big change. All of a sudden the Planck units you know, or mm -hmm. the Planck constant became the standard from which all the other constants are, you know, yeah. are calculated. Yeah. Um, and that's good. Yeah. And and the standard values. So all these are experiments, you know, experimental values, you know, that like are empirical values. Um, but there's as well empirical values about like the CMB or, you know, the, the, the temperature, this is a background temperature of the universe, mm. you know, uh, measurements in cosmology, but these measurements in cosmology are never as precise as measurements at the, you know, at the quantum scale, because those measurements we can make in a laboratory and be extremely precise in the measurement you know, in the way we measure it. One of these measurements that is cosmological that's not so precise is G, right? Is the gravitational constant, mm -hmm. right? The Cavendish, the Cavendish experiment are, you know, can be repeated in a, you know, in a high school classroom. Um, but the precision, you know, at this point is about, 10 to minus five, which is, you know, not good at all considered quantum theory, which is 10 minus 12, 10 minus 13. Mm -hmm. So um, um, any equation that includes G, right, mm -hmm. is uh, bringing from empirical uh, levels, mm -hmm. is bringing an imprecision hmm. in the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And since all Planck units include G, uh, mm. it has a problem in precision, meaning, you know, and since you, uh, Planck units are so small, we don't measure them. They're way, way past anything we could measure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, either than their effects, like uh, the Casimir effect or mm. what we see around very energetic uh, pulsars. Uh, we actually see the vacuum fluctuation influencing uh, the the star, uh, and and um, um, but 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 the the really exciting thing about this um, this paper is one of the exciting thing about this paper is that mm -hmm. not only it gives a analytical solution to G for the first time that is mm -hmm. from first principle, you know, you G emerged naturally. 
um, it as well, um, you know, predicts uh, age bar. And, uh, and, and so when we, and, and the Rydberg constant and all these other things that naturally emerge, and these ones emerge with very high level of precision. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, and clearly since now we have the connection between G and all these other constants uh, in a fundamental, you know, framework, uh, we can back engineer G to 12 digit accuracy. Mm. And so, wow. um, and the Planck units at, this, uh, at the same time and all this, everything just upgrades, you know, Which... and a, a whole new standards of units emerge. Right, and that just ripples out through all of historical, you know, uh, evaluation Measurement. of measurements and, and kind of recalibrating Right. on that accuracy. Yes, uh, and it, it uh, actually solves very fundamental problems in quantum theory, which are called measurements problem and, oh, yeah. on, and hierarchy yeah. problems and yeah. all kinds of things just get solved automatically, including multiple, <laughs> you know, million dollar prices, you know, like all, th all these things emerge that have yeah. been problems in physics that have been very uh, clearly identified and have million dollar yeah. prices to be solved. Oh, yeah. uh, well, that yeah. sounds, uh, sounds lucrative potentially. <laughs> well, it would be good to get for the research, you know, everything for goes sure. to the research and, and you know, the, currently it's been very, very difficult. I don't know, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. you know, financing the research is really, really important right now. Yeah, I actually yeah. saw that was a question asking about that, uh, which we can get to if you'd like. Oh, yeah. But I, uh, you know, in terms of a million dollar question, uh, what kind of, is there a time frame that you might uh, propose for this? <laughs> I ask that every time. <laughs> I know, and I push it back every time. But just say, not let's yet. just say not that really. like <laughs> the flow of the writing right now is accelerating because we've, We've, um, we've identified many, many of the details that we needed to identify to be able to like, be able to flow. So, <laughs> okay, good. I, yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm confident, you know, that it will be before the end of the year, right? So, cool. Yeah. yeah. That is exciting because there's not too many days left. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. the end of the year, so. Right. Oh, that's great. Good yeah. to hear. All right, well, thank you for that update. That, mm -hmm. Truly exciting and, and and if if it's not the beginning of the year, it will definitely be there yeah, by yeah, the time surely. we do Tulum in uh, mid February. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to just talk about Tulum for a, for a minute? Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited may not know about. about it. It. Well, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing, and uh, you know, it'd be it'd be great to have. Uh, uh, some talks with Greg, you know, Greg Braden is going to be participating. Oh, talks great. with uh, Danica Patrick, you know, as well, uh, you know, ex race car driver. I love to drive really fast. So, uh, <laughs> and I, I used to, you know, street race and all this stuff, mm -hmm. my motorbike mostly. But um, the, you know, so I, um, but as well, Danica has done an incredible journey through, you know, the um, larger sensory experience of, of reality, you know, mm -hmm. and has explored mm -hmm. with many different scientists and researchers on their podcasts, you know, which mm -hmm. is very popular. And uh, yeah, it's great to have her there. So um, pretty excited to share that moment Fantastic. and then go to the ancient site and uh, connect mm -hmm. with the metric of space time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, amazing things happened just during those trips, mm -hmm. deep transformation for everybody, including us. So we're really excited to, to, uh, to have that happen again. And that's uh, early February that is starts, right? Uh, like yeah, mid-February. Mid yeah. yeah, for a full moon in Tichin Itza, mm -hmm. mid-February, uh, and we'll be right there on site. And so, uh, yeah, it will be amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited.
Yeah. Great. So I know that there's still still room for people to sign up for that if they, if they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's filling up fast, so people should really get on it if they're okay, interested. Uh, I can see. Uh, looks like Jamie has got a link posted yeah. in there, so it's looking good. Singularity right. Adventure Adventures dot com. Yeah. Singularity Adventures. Hee-haw. Yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> Jump you never into know where black hole. You never know where you're going to end up. Yes, you <laughs> never know when you. It's the improbability drive, you know. Right. <laughs> yes, you, you might be. That, uh, you might be a couch, a potato, and a cucumber on your way to Alpha Centauri, but hopefully you reconstitute before, yeah. before the end. <laughs> I saw that great, great cartoon in our WhatsApp thread of the time machine and yeah, the people. You know these kids get in it and they travel back to the day, age of dinosaurs and there's the time machine with the plug unplugged you know there's no electricity <laughs> <laughs> like oops, <laughs> oops. <laughs> yeah like well you know yeah. i was i was referring there to um the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy uh book mm -hmm. yeah. um yeah. yeah which was pretty fun. i had some really actually uh interesting ideas about uh -huh. For sure. you know the the reality, the what was the question they asked to the computer? Reality, the universe, and everything. We uh, want to know the source of reality. Life, life, the universe, and everything. Yeah, and everything. Yeah. And it <laughs> took a few million years, but it calculated it. Uh, it was 42. <laughs> 42. <I think. laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. They missed it by a few. You know, it's 64, but it was close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a pretty yeah. good calculation. Maybe in that era, it was 42. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's take some questions. All right. We'll go for about an hour. And at uh, yep. 1.30. Sounds good. All right. <clears throat> I guess we'll just jump in from the top here. Yeah. With Luke, our friend Luke. Um, by the way, I will bring you on to the uh, to the screen if you'd like to the to the presentation. If you have a question, we're going to ask, and yeah, I'll I can bring you on uh, as a as a somebody uh, on screen to to talk with Nassim. And if you'd like to do so, just unmute your video and your audio. And if you don't want to, or it's not convenient to do so, um, you can just leave them off, and then we'll know you don't want to come on. Okay. So this first question, Nassim, is. Uh, I, this is from Luke. I read in early documentation on arc crystals that exposing the, an arc crystal to running water was much more efficient to increase its coherence than exposing it to still water. So I took the habit of filling my arc water bottle, holding my arc next to the running water, filling the bottle. Does this make a significant difference? I know how potent the tetrahelix is, but here I refer to water running straight from a tap. Um. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure. Um, does he mean that the crystal is being, is the water uh, uh, touching the crystal or not? I, I'm un unclear there, but. Um, Probably so, I'm bringing him on now. Okay. Hey, Luke. Hi. Hello, there was a big gap, so I don't know what you were saying for the last 30 seconds or so. Oh, oh, oh I, I was confusing you. Hey, uh, we've met before. Where are you at exactly again? I'm near Saint Jerome uh, on your way to oh, yeah. uh, Saint Sauvage. Well, hey, I <laughs> still love the road. All right. Um, um, yeah, that just brings me back to my ski days. Um, uh, the uh, so is the water hitting the crystal when you're holding it? No, no, I'm just holding it next to the water. Just, okay. I don't know if um, I'm doing it for nothing. I don't know if it's significant or not. But I no, it's not. That's not going to be significant. No? Uh, no, the reason in the tetrahelix it's significant is because the water comes in contact directly with the uh -huh. crystal and the crystal is hitting, is being hit by the water. So it produces a, you know, piezoelectric effect in the crystalline structure that energize the water. Um, so, um, but if you have the water bottle, 
I mean, the water bottle is remarkable because, you know, all the people I give it to around me, you know, um, after you start drinking from the water bottle for like a week or two or a month, and then you just try to drink the exact same water, but like just from a glass that's not been in the water bottle with the crystal underneath. And like, you just don't want that water anymore. It's just, uh, it's remarkable. It, 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 you know, it's really, it works really good. I like it. Uh, yeah. I only drink water exposed today, but I have a container and yeah. it is kind of the, 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 the arc water bottle. It's if not you, if, medium, if but... you can get the water bottle, it makes it so much easier. And then you can carry it with you all the time. You know, you have it with you and the crystal is right in there, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's really nice. Um, you know, the crystal is right in there. And there you go. It's just uh, magnetically held, right? So it's really easy to put it, take it in and out. But it, then if you get a, a second crystal, then you can just leave it in the bottle. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I've got chlorophyll in there right now. You might not see because it's got mm -hmm. a, back, a green yeah. background, but you know, you can put your you can put all sorts of things in there as well. Like you can put wine. When you put wine in there, the change in taste is remarkable. Like you just keep some of them of the wine out and then put wine in there and um, leave it there for like maybe an hour and then and then taste the difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. difference to water. I just have a question though, uh, talking about exposing to water. Mm -hmm. um, like I've been swimming with my arc uh, in the lake all summer, but then I read something on the recently on the uh, on the uh, tourist tech site, yeah, and it said not to put it in water. Does it mean yeah. for a long period of time or not at all? Yeah, I mean we're trying to re reduce the exposure to water because there is magnets in there that are they're double coated with um with uh different layers but the lay the last layer is gold right and all this so so it's actually little gold crystals uh mm -hmm. little gold uh, uh magnets and and um they uh as they roll like the as they move in there they can get scratched and if they do then the material, which is neodymium boron iron, is um, very uh, sensitive to uh, humidity and it, it oxidizes very quickly. So then mm -hmm. you can get oxidization like rust, you know, from the saddle. So we're trying to avoid that. Uh, okay. As well, inside the pendant, there is some magnets as well that can get scratched. And if they do, then they're going to start rusting. So yeah. it's, um, we're trying to avoid, you know, rinsing it is fine and like cleaning it and all this stuff. Um, I use a toothbrush, an old toothbrush to clean them. And um, that's fine, but submerging them all the time can cause some issues. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm Thanks, glad you know, we, we're, in, we're working as well. You know, earlier, um, Marshall was talking about, like, finances, you know, like, we're working on, we have so many things that we're working on that could come out, you know, we're, we're needing some help uh, to, like, for, because there's so much behind that we can, like, bring to the world um that um is just sitting uh either on my laboratory bench or on in my head you know uh mm -hmm. or on some uh cad file somewhere in my computer um i'm excited about some of the device that can emerge one of them being a puck you know that like i i've got a hockey pack puck device i call it the puck you know uh, uh from living in quebec for m m part of my childhood that 
you know, I'm a fan of, uh, of hockey. I was a hockey goaler, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. um, but um, the, uh, the puck, you know, uh, actually applies a specific electromagnetic uh, fields to the arc crystal. So you'll be able to snap it in there and then amplify its field uh, so that it makes a bubble, you know, that, you know, that covers your whole house um, and things like that. So, oh, wow. you know, like we have sh stuff coming, you know, behind. Hmm. We're in, you know, all three companies, that is ARC, Taurus Tech, and uh, the Resonance Science Foundation is is needing help. The Resonance Science Find Foundation that we're talking on right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, actually needs members. Um, we have 120,000 people taking the course. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we only have uh, 2,000 members uh, approximately. And this is what the foundation lives on. And, um, and this is how the foundation is able to... Um, to produce material to keep giving to you guys and as well to um, to uh, do research, uh, which is the, right. you know, uh, and and hire physicists and, and employees so that we can move forward. And um, that's all reliant on us selling courses and and contributing members, which is like really, really important at the at, at five dollars a month, that's sixty dollars a year. You know, I think, you know, it's a few coffees <laughs> at Starbucks <laughs> these days. You know, uh, the this uh, that you know, if we if we have uh, twenty thousand people becoming members at that at that level, sixty dollars a month we are able to hire more physicists and hire more engineers and hire and like, and, you know, move things along much faster uh, yeah. and give more material back to the public. Yeah. Uh, you know, and more discoveries and so on. And, it, and then we're seeking as well support in, uh, in, uh, technological development uh, at, at uh, you know so there's all sorts of of uh, ways people can participate but certainly this is one of them and uh, becoming members is so critical for us uh, and and I know we can do it and we're going to start talking about it more because I think people don't realize uh, you know how much it cost and how much how difficult it is to do research as an independent and like this this is of course i could get grants and all kinds of things from you know the foundation could get all kinds of things from different institutions but and i i'm very sensitive to like having this come from for the public from the public this is why I made the course free and this is why I want, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to educate people and all this, but like, this is really like a, a, an opportunity for the world to evolve from the source, from the world, from the public at large, you know, uh, and, and really, really get it out. Um, and and uh and do the job and and it's not like so becoming a member is like yeah you get perks you get this you get that um but really i'm hoping that people become member as well because they want to make sure that we have the resources to give this to others and better services and all this to others as well so that you know others have access to this information more promotion more we're able to like tell the world that like come and check this out um you know more the more the world gets better right? <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and and um and more we're able to do research and really dig into these things um 
better it is for the world, I assure you, this is really like, so, so this is really why fundamentally you'd want to become a member. And then yes, having the perks is, is really great as well. Is just, and there's going to be more. Um, for instance, when we have the course in audio form, uh, as a member, you'll have access to it. Um, uh, as a public, uh, you can read the course for free. However, to get the audio file, you'll have to pay for it because uh, it's expensive for us to do this and translate everything into multiple languages and all this stuff because there's the French site and all this. So, so mm -hmm. I wanted to say this during this talk today. It's like, we need your help. We really, really do. Is there, regarding this, and, and I agree so much that the work you've been doing for the last 30 years is, is the science of the new humanity. And it's so, it's probably the most important work on earth right now. Point. Thank you, yeah. As, as far as helping, is it more practical in your situation right now? Is it better to have uh, one donation of a larger amount or to increase, you know, because we can all, you know, augment our daily. We don't have to stay oh. $5. Yeah, both, like any donations that people can give if they want to become members, then they can choose $5, but I think we have options for 10 or 20 or 100 yeah, or whatever, and like, you know, a, a month. And, and, and that really helped us. Like it, it, both are really important for us, including donations for our, you know, uh, 501c3 status and all this, you know, this is, mm -hmm. we're a nonprofit foundation, produ you know, producing material um, for the public, for, you know, uh, and, and uh, to educate in unified physics and educate in deeper understanding of reality. So thank you for asking, but yeah, it, mm. both can really make a difference if you're able, if you have the resources the foundation is in really deep need for support right now that way uh, because we're struggling, um, you know, after COVID and all this, that like this whole rigmarole of the last year and a half, mm. um, you know, it's, um, it's been challenging to maintain a financial autonomy and, um, for I mean many different businesses um, I, we're really really grateful that we're still here and that's because of all of you guys supporting like uh, you know the the 2,000 people that became members the people that have been uh, buying courses all this so mm -hmm. I'm really grateful for you guys doing that and let's like, let's go out and talk to our friends and family and say, hey, you know, this is really important work that needs support right now. If you want to actually, you know, there's so many people are saying, what can I do? Like, this is the first thing you can do. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, you know, they, they, that will bring, you know, the science and technology of the new world, like the of the world we want to have. This is right. like, I mean, that I don't say that directly, but I'm going to quote you because it might sound arrogant, <laughs> you know, but some of the most important work that needs to be financed right now in, in the world, uh, you know, is this work. <laughs> um, unified field theory, uh, unified theory of physics lead to very advanced technological developments that have that have everything to do with the capacity of the world to, uh, to overcome uh, some of the largest difficulties it's facing right now, which are eminent, which, you know, and so it, it's, uh, it's critical that this gets funded and, um, and that it gets funded by the people, you know, so that, um, so that no special interest can come in and, you know, control the narrative in some ways, you know, so that it's open. It's, it's a scientific inquiry uh, that is completely open. Um, uh, I, I don't mean this in a negative way. It, it's just that um, we got to make sure that this is like an open source uh, dynamic, meaning 
in terms of the information, right? Um, and that uh, all, uh, all sides of the opinions, you know, are, are heard and, and explored and so on. And, um, and that we can really, really make a big difference. Open source like the universe is, so that's a pretty good model. Right. <laughs> uh, one last thing is there. I haven't looked at the, um, not the teaser, but I mean, on the way, on the, uh, the homepage, Resonance homepage, mm. is the current short video up to date with your latest discoveries, trying to find the most efficient short documentary to sell your work? Uh, yeah. Um... There is, there is so much out there. I mean, it's hard to, um, it's hard to say one of them. And you know, the subject is complex. But um, yeah, I mean, there's some videos there. Uh, we, you know, like we're so reduced in our staffing mm. that we have, um, we we have, like terabytes of material that's not out uh, and that's not being promoted properly. And so I, we're, we're revamping everything right now to actually try to get this out because it's like a dam, you know, on all the stuff um, that's behind. Uh, and so it really is um, uh, uh, like, yeah, you can use the website. I mean, uh, if people are a little bit more technical, listening to the video that's at the bottom of the page where there is the, the abstract of a new paper, you know, which I published a few months ago, I published the abstract of the new paper. Uh, if they're wanting to understand kind of like the guts of the, fa of the theory, uh, there's a video there that's pretty good. It's more dry though. Um, there is other videos that are more produce value videos that you can find on, on YouTube, on our YouTube uh, member uh, page. For instance, becoming a member of our YouTube uh, channel really helps us too. Uh, it would really, really help for people to have, to become members of our, U our YouTube channel and all this so that like we really build together and we help each other. Uh, to, to really like uh, um, bring our power to bear, right? Into the world. Okay. Well, so gang, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. We right now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you, you so much, so much. So Thanks precious. for always being here, Luke. Okay, bye. Been, around, been around for a long time. <laughs> Bonjour au Québec. Merci, toi aussi. Ciao. Bye-bye. Okay, let's let this uh, change. Okay. Yeah, good. That's so, so important. I'm glad you addressed that today because, um, you know, especially in these times, we need to um, do all we can to, to help get the information and the theory and the research advanced and out in the world. Um, yeah. The world needs it, obviously. We've known this for years, but more than ever. <laughs> yeah, for sure. These days. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that, Mr. Thank you. I'm so, glad to be able to address it. So we have another few. Mm -hmm. There's a question from Heather here. Yeah. So can you explain from the holographic unified field perspective, does sound become light? Are they independent of each other? What is the relationship and the difference in their properties? In some references, it says sound requires a medium and that sound cannot move through a vacuum because there's nothing to oscillate. Is this actually true? <laughs> Can light occur without sound? <laughs> uh, that is a good question. There's because... more, but we can see if we get to that. Let me see if I can find Heather. Although I think Heather, I don't see your name in the, I see a Heather Keller. If that's the same person. Oh, that name just disappeared. <laughs> right, <laughs> right when I looked at it. So uh -huh. uh, if, if you're here, oh, Heather, there you are. Okay, that is you. I, that name actually just raised their hand. That's what this guy's gonna ask you to do. So I'm gonna bring you on. That must be the, 
the correct Heather. Okay. Uh -oh. Hey, Heather. Hey. Where, Where are you are at? You? I'm in a little town called La Ventana in Baja, California. Nice. Yeah. Are you surfing? I haven't started the season, but I'm going to start uh, learning to win foil. Oh, nice. I hope, with the wing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Found to do it. So. Yeah. I was thinking of Scorpion Bay the other day. Oh. Yeah. yeah that's, that's on the list, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have you well, been? That's a good question, darling. That is a good one. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm actually writing a, a, a dissertation, my thesis on on this, and so on it's what? important for. Um, well, I'm researching the, the how light language, like speaking, as I used to say, speaking in tongues, um, creates like a quantum leap leap of awareness in terms of like using that as a tool for healing. So general sound. Sound related, yes, from um, the from the voice, mm -hmm. from an altered state of consciousness, and mm -hmm. how that can give access to higher orders, work more organized, organized, you know, uh, highly organized okay. uh, pockets pockets of information. Create coherency in the quantum field. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, so 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 I could go at this from very very different angles, you know, many different angles. So I'm going to start from the uh, biological mechanical angle uh, right now, but it's, it has many layers. So. Um, Maybe you want to take notes, but whatever you you can just review later. But yeah, uh, I got it. If you okay, there you go. Um, so if you, so when you when you the error that's done, okay, is that we tend to even in your question, there's the word um, independent, right? Or there's no such thing in the universe, right? So you can't say uh, there's electromagnetic fields here because we identify them from this frequency to this frequency and then say there's, you know, sound here, right? Audio, right? At, at this frequency and this frequency and RF and, you know, like you, those are boxes we made. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to translate how that occurs when we're looking at something that you're exploring right okay. like the impact of these boxes is for instance that um we might think of the sound that a person make um maybe it's a shaman oming or whatever as uh, okay let's see if this actually has a physical effect on the person that's being healed or whatever whatever physical effect we can measure right you're assuming that the sound that are coming out are uh, in some ways separated from the way the brain wave, you know, ultra, you know, uh, electromagnetic fluctuations that are occurring in the brain. You can't separate those two. Yeah. Right. So it's yep. so it's a combined effect. So you can't just say it's a sound because if you make the sound from a machine. You're not going to get the, the same result, right? Um, no. Right. So, so, so the electromagnetic fluctuations that are going on in the being that's making the sound mm -hmm. are involved in the effect and the overall effect of the, the, the result of this event. Because it's nothing is separate. So it's happening to the right. person who's making the sound. It's happening to the environment around. Like everything is included in it. Yeah. The and, big thing. Yeah. And so, so that's the mechanical part. But I, so now let's talk about the source of the being itself. Right. So that's making the sound. Mm -hmm. And the source of the being that's being healed or whatever, whoever is involved. Right. Or mm -hmm. even the material world around this person that's making the sound like the table, the walls, whatever, right? Yep. All the material shit that's around 
right? Mm -hmm. How does it get affected, right? Well, you have to know the source of, so basically the being that's there, let's now like go to the quantum scale of that existence. It is actually a flow of information through the structure of space. So yeah. as, the, as the being is doing this event, whatever event the being is doing, whether it's like eating, going to sleep, whatever, it's being recorded in the structure of space, yep. right? So space-time is the memory imprint of these events. Yep. Okay. So this memory imprint, I'm trying to give this in layman's term. I'm sorry, but it, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. So this memory imprint is, you can think of it as like um, electromagnetic fluctuations in space time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, a, like a memory imprint on a hard disk on the computer is an, is an event in which there is a bit on a elect, uh, on an electromagnetic or uh, magnetic component of the device. Right. So mm -hmm. this that's a physical imprint. Um, yeah. Okay. It is a physical imprint. Mm -hmm. But remember, I just defined that physicality is a flow of this information through space time, right? Like atoms, the quantum structure that you're made of, the being is made of, that's doing the sound or whatever, like that is actually information moving through space time. So physical is relative is is not separate from you know fluid dynamics of space-time fluid dynamics of space-time is what we call physical there's no separation between space time or vacuum fluctuation and physical the physicality the physicality is actually made of vacuum fluctuations right right so so let's look at these vacuum fluctuations. So you have very, very, very high frequency, right? From the Planck scale. So the Planck scale frequency, it's insane, right? It's, you know, it's like the wavelength is 10 to minus 42 centimeters or something. You know, I can't remember Planck time, you know, and, and, um, and uh, the, the, the length, the radius is like 10 to minus 33 centimeters, which is just to remind Ridiculous. everybody scales, right? Like if I grew that to, the grain, to a grain of sand, the proton would be, you know, the diameter from the sun to Alpha Centauri, right? So that's the scale relationship to a proton, which is extremely small. You're made of a hundred trillion cells. Each cell is made of 100 trillion protons, approximately. That's that's the minimum, right? That's assuming it would be all hydrogen. Um, yeah. So um, so protons are small already. So so to answer your question, there is so so this is high frequency. High frequency means very high energy levels, right? Because there's a lot of pulse in within one second, right? A lot. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of energy available there. From this energy level is um, dampening, what we call in physics screening, dampening uh, of the oscillations. So they, you get, the Planck field is oscillating at a very high level of energy. It's chaotic where we call it not matter, <laughs> right? But where we call it matter, it's coherent, okay? So the matter is yeah, okay. Right? And it's coherent because it's spinning. So it's got angular momentum. And because it's got angular momentum, all the little oscillators are spinning together in a collective behavior. So now you have collective modes of oscillations that are coherent. So now you have relationship between coherent and incoherent, right? You have a relationship between, you know, in physics, we would call it, if you think of these Planck fluctuation, like as a, as a flu, as a fluid or as a gas or as a plasma, you could say that you have a Bose 
uh, condensate phase, right? Where everything is in phase and coherent, co-moving. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you have a Fermi phase and you have phase transitions between, right? So meaning the Fermi phase is where it's more like a gas that's just oscillating in, you know, chaotic modes. And that's where we call there's no matter, right? We, we think of that as the space between things. But then you okay. have to add, it's more complex than that. I'm just, I, you have to add the concept that it's fractal as well. So where you say there's no space or there's no matter, if you look closely, you find matter again. I mean, you know, uh, for instance, vacuum, between galaxies is the highest vacuum we can imagine, right? Like right now, it's it's billions of times more vacuum than what we can produce on Earth, uh, or millions of times. But um, the but still, particles are only a centimeters apart between galaxies, right? Like uh, hydrogen atoms are only like a centimeter apart, and that's considered really really high vacuum, right? So, so is fractal... there sound happening in the vacuum then? So. So you have definitely electromagnetic fluctuations happening in the vacuum. If if so 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 the concept that sound is is can only be uh, vehicle, right? Can only be uh, carried through a medium. Leaves you with the question, which you know Maxwell definitely asked and answered. And he got the right answer when he did was, well, what is the carrier for the electromagnetic field? And his answer, well, there's an ether, right? This, there's mm -hmm. some space is not empty. It's, it's like a fluid and, and the electromagnetic waves are carried by an ether. So when the question is asked, you know, the, 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 the typical scientist will answer Correctly, but wrongly, because it, correctly in the sense that, yes, you know, um, there is no sound in space because there's nothing to carry it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's assuming that sound and electromagnetic fields are not related. Because in space, electromagnetic fields are definitely being carried. Mm -hmm. And so you could think of sound as the really dampened part of the electromagnetic field, right? From the vacuum fluctuations, right? Mm -hmm. It's a really long wavelength, right? Com relative to it. And you can think of it as like a... Um, a way that the, 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 if you think of the electromagnetic fluctuation at the Planck scale as like a fluid or a plasma, that with the sound, which is the much longer wavelength, you can create organization in that, in that fluid, in that field. Just like uh, cymatics, right? Where you, where you emit sound and and sand organized in geometry on the plate. Yep. Right. Well, that's only a two-dimensional example, right? Because it's on the right. plane. But actually, you know, space-time is doing that. And hmm. so, um, so because it's like the sand is the planks, if you'd like. Uh, right. 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 Okay. Is, you know, I'm trying to give you a short answer, but it, it's not that simple because, because if you want to do the job correctly, you have to stop dissociating electromagnetic fields and uh, sound, you know. That's um, two different things. You, you have to stop dissociating them. Right. You have to associate them. Um, and, um, and you... And you, 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 you might say, well, sound is like a compressive wave, right? Well, that's because there's a part of the gravitational field in electromagnetics that represent the analog of what sound is as at the lower frequency. 
And that's why there's ancient traditions that talk about sound levitating objects. And sound it? turning into light. People voicing or making sound to like in dark places and then something light, light is created. Right, exactly. It's because there's a relationship between the electromagnetic field and sound that's not understood, right? And, and I just give it to you in somewhat complex matter. I try, you know, just think there is no, um, it's just a continuous relationship. There is no separation between the two. And the medium that carries the electromagnetic field is, is the same medium that carries the sound field. Consciousness. It, yeah, pardon me? Consciousness. Yeah, consciousness is, for instance, you know, the, like um, the, uh, the conduit for the electromagnetic field to express sound field, if you'd like, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. uh, with intent, right? Yeah. Because it's a coherent field of information. Mm -hmm. So it's not just random sound, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, the sound you find in nature, right? Where birds call each other. Mm -hmm where um, insects talk to each other, where, you know, like all kinds, like you can, you got to consider all the sounds, you know. Mm -hmm. that the are, wind blowing. Yeah, the wind blowing, exactly. The, the leaf fluttering, uh, the, all this, those are all part of this network of organization that produces, you know, consciousness. <laughs> you know, it's all um, without all these other things happening. Consciousness doesn't happen, <laughs> right? Like it, it uh, you have years to hear the sound because it's a fundamental part of the way self-organizing system organize, right? So you have eyes to see the electromagnetic field because you know at least a section of it. Although it's a small band, but you still see it, right? You've developed technology to access it. It's very advanced technology, by the way, you know, which involves a little black hole in the middle of your pupil that uh, absorbs the photons, right? Um, so, you know, um, so. And then, hmm. yeah. Well, <laughs> I could keep going, but yeah. like they talk about, you know, uh, somebody says a word and it, and it, uh, y your, your brain, uh, or somewhere in your, in your mental body, uh, generates a photon reaction, a photon storm and sends, you know, a, a reaction into your nervous system and then causes emotions. But, and yeah. all this is happening over time. But then if we talk about, things being non-local and they talk about things like getting transmitted over your, you know, your nervous system in terms of neurons, but everything's actually happening non-locally. Like that just like, in That's my right. mind, I'm like, I, I, it doesn't make sense. And then I have to explain it <laughs> uh, yes. based on the old paradigm and like, but now there's this, like everything's yeah. happening all at the same time. Yes. You know, you will have the physics very, very shortly to be able to actually give it a very solid um, uh, analytical fundamental uh, division, definition. Um, the, this is why I mentioned that it's leaving imprints on the structure of space. That was to hint at the non-local non um, information issue as well, meaning that the sounds you've made are still, you know, oscillating in space oh, in this okay. region of space. Okay. So that, um, so that this is there's a record that that people can actually access non-linearly. Yep. <laughs> so you can actually leave sound bubbles if you'd like, you know, in space and time, in, in coordinates, 
and then direct people to those coordinates to get the benefit of these oscillation. Um, yeah, um, okay. you know, you'll be surprised what you can do <laughs> with this knowledge. It's very, very powerful. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I have a weekly call where we speak light language and people are coming in online. And uh, sometimes they'd, I turn off my audio. And so I had the awareness that even though I'm speaking it into my own space, that they're still getting the effects of it because we're all connected, not yeah. locally anyway, even yeah. though they can't hear it or That's perceive right. it in any way. Yeah, especially if, if you just seen each other on Zoom, whatever, then you're more entangled. And we're, and, uh, you know, coherent. Yeah, you know, that's right. Conscious, yeah. yeah, you're creating coherency in the Planck field that involves mm -hmm. all the nodes in the grid, meaning mm -hmm. all the people involved. And mm -hmm. that grid is uh, is sustaining. You can access mm -hmm. that grid, not only in a linear function at the moment, meaning you, you can access that grid later on as well, you know, because that, again, you know, the information is in space time. So, this is why it's really important to understand the influence we have on the structure of space and the relationship that we have to each other uh, because it has to do with your awareness, uh, individual in awareness as well, like your, you know, your capacity to access this, um, you know, means that um, your capacity as well to like influence or or connect to um, to other uh, people, you know, like uh, or to to produce the grid. It's powerful. Great. Thank you so Heather, much. Thank Thank you, Heather, for joining us. Yeah, mm -hmm. great question. Asking a great question. Yeah. Have fun out great there. Discussion. Be safe. Will do. Thanks. Be well. Was a, that was a good question. Yeah, yeah. That I was reminded of that that great uh, scene, the opening of the movie Contact. When, yeah. You know when the when the the camera is just pulling out from the earth and it goes out, and you can hear the soundtrack of all the the radio transmission that's going farther, farther out in the space, and the very last one is Adolf Hitler, you know, doing his rant, and that was the first radio broadcast transmission. <laughs> and then it goes to silence after that. It was like way out there in space is that Why? still, it's still out there. It's still reverberating. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> the thing is, is that um, it's the same thing for the electromagnetic field. So yeah. people could, you know, I was asked that uh, by my kids, I think it was last week, just before Halloween, uh, that, um, you know, my 11 year old asked if, um, so let me see, Papa, if I was to, I know it was uh, Oris, 16 year old, mm -hmm. he, well, Sarama kind of as well had the question, but um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you were to instantaneously transport yourself across the universe, would you be, would you see the signals of earth um, you know, billions of years ago, because you would see the photons arriving. Like if you mm -hmm. could zoom in on, on the earth, um, what would you see? Would you see the earth billions of years ago? <laughs> and uh, yes, you would. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, you know, right. information. Uh, that's what's there, yeah. Still present. Um, and, uh, and Relative to the time of the transmission of that information and your distance away. Yeah, and your position. And your position. Relative to the emission, you know, uh, right. the emitter, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Relative and at the speed of light, right? So, you know, at the speed then, of light. Or at and the then at the same time, based on what you're going to be publishing in the new paper with the sub -plonk transmission, it's all there. Already, that's right. All the time, everywhere. So, so you can you can listen to the emission with mm -hmm. uh, at the sub Planckian level with a, a delay of ten to the minus twenty seven right seconds. Mm -hmm. So 
no delay, right? No like, delay. So the no presence delay, is like instantaneously because it's yeah. entangled, right? So, yeah. so, but the linear transmission still happen. Right. Yeah, right. the linear the speed the of light. Two, the two exists. The speed of light transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The speed the, of light. Transmission. The relative one, the relativity based. Right, the one that's based on the scale at which we're measuring it. Right, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. right. Cool, great, right. right. So cool. All right, let's see. What time is it? We have uh, how much do we were we're going to go for fifteen more minutes. You want to just do that today, or a yeah. little longer? Or what? Well, I I spent a lot of time on the first question. Uh, yeah, because, because first couple. Of it was a good question. Uh, Let's see. Do you want to uh, take a look and see where you want to go? There's a question. I think we actually, this one from Daniel, I think we just actually talked about that one not too long ago about uh, your take on the current state of the world and how do you think RSF and more broadly unified physics teachings can help move us forward. Um, well, I said that earlier when I was discussing the support yeah. we need for the research yeah. and like how that's going to really, you know, have an impact mm -hmm. uh, technologically as well. Right. Yeah, I feel like that has been spoken to. Yeah. And uh, this question from Christiana about our interaction with extraterrestrial and in terrestrial beings how would that influence our technology and evolution yeah uh, you want to go into that one yeah uh we could um um yeah i mean it I'll bring up really, uh, christiana there is there you know there is a lot of uh, um um there's a lot i'm just gonna end answer it quickly but there's you know there's a lot of uh, evidence right now that's emerging of the extraterrestrial connection to the human evolution and and uh, history um, um hi christiana hi nasim hi marshall hi, nice, hi. To <laughs> nice to see Good you to see you Nice to see you too. Um, your questions always get voted on top. <laughs> you always have the, the questions that people want to know about. Um, so, and they always put me in awkward situation. <laughs> I, I, I hope that's not the You case always do today. that to me. You love that don't you <laughs> no no that's not at all my intention but i, I know, know that you like to talk about these things and also it's yeah. important for humanity so yeah i agree i'm just kidding you i'm just yeah, giving you a hard indeed. time it's because i know you <laughs> as a friend that i can say that um yeah, yeah the um you know the extraterrestrial so what exactly is your question is um I was, uh, you know, I'm looking at how we are interacting with each other right now on this planet. Yeah. And we're not so good at it, you know, <laughs> all of us. So yes. we're needing help. And it is addressed to us to for tens of years now that ships have been coming. They have given us technology. They have given us people like you to advance that technology. They have given us resources that we could use. And we're still in the Neanderthal of like evolution from my perspective, you know, yeah. if you look from the perspective of an advanced civilization, you, you laugh for sure at the situation of the world. You uh, might laugh yeah. and you might cry. I, I'm also well. crying a lot lately. So that's also available. What's but, that? Uh, you have been what? I'm also crying a lot lately, yeah. yes, yeah. but <laughs> laugh is part of it. <laughs> right, right, right. Sure. Right, That's, you gotta laugh, otherwise you cry. But, um, bipolar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The so thing, uh, the thing is, is I, I wanna I wanna clarify the first statement you made, which we're not good at it, at um, at collaborating. Um, hmm. th uh, the problem actually is that we're really good at collaborating if it's for war. <laughs> yeah. well yes no but, and so, you know i mean so 
what mm. we need to do is get better at collaborating for survival <laughs> and mm. uh, not for destruction. Um, and because otherwise we can be really, really good. Um, we can, we can really, really, really be good. It's just that, um, you know, it's, um, if you look at our evolution, it's very, very young, you know, cosmologically speaking. It's like yeah, the blink of an eye, you know, uh, for the galaxy, it's like, you know, who are these people? Oh, <laughs> you know, they're so... The newcomers. Know, yeah, <laughs> newcomers, right. And, and, you know, I thought they were ants just a minute ago. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, you know, the, um, it's really, we think of it as taking a long time. It's actually happening really quickly um and um but <laughs> it's not so um you know you say like time flies when you're having fun there's a lot of parts that are not so fun so you know yes. <laughs> time is tending to feel like it's taking a long time um, yes. <laughs> yeah so we have to increase the fun parts and decrease the not fun parts and so Absolutely. yeah and so that's why the you know if we can do that in the in our personal lives already increase the fun parts decrease the not so fun parts is a good start and it might be challenging <laughs> i would suggest but that's just a suggesting a suggestion is to skip most of the time any standard news source, <laughs> right? Um, We're definitely doing that, yeah. <laughs> yes, to increase the fun and decrease the discouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not, you know, I'm not making a judgment call on any of the news source. I'm just saying, like, just so at least, you know, you can stay abreast of what's going on in the world, but personally in your life there's got to be there's got to be some fun there's got to be some you know joy some excitement about being alive at this time even with all the challenges and and a, a sense of uh, a sense of um, of purpose and a sense of mission a sense of community of like participating in something, even if it's not direct community, meaning might not be just friends and family. I'm just talking about community generally as participating. Yeah. And when you get to community at this global community, then you might notice that there's other communities <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that you were mentioning before, right? That there's yeah. larger communities. Clearly, because there's more evolved civilizations in the universe and they've connected to other communities in other solar system or even in the same solar system. For instance, you could have solar system that have multiple planets that are able to sustain life. So, um, you know, the, this larger community, um, then if you consider that, uh, I think at this point, saying that there's no evidence of that would be like completely ignoring all of what has happened in the last two years. Um, before that, it was ignoring all the millions of pieces of evidence that have been there from antiquity to like now, uh, which required the person to just dismiss everything, you know, without studying. Um, at yes. this point, you'd have to dismiss the Pentagon, most of the governments in the world, like, you know. The, the flying saucer in your yard, even. Yeah, like, exactly. You'd have to dismiss, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd have to dismiss a lot. But um, so, like, to the point of what we could consider dissociation. Like, and, um, so um, this, um, this is a something that his part of the evolution that we're ongoing, right? This phase transition that we're ongoing right now uh, is part, like part of that is realizing we're not, 
not Hello. only do we need to be global in our approach to our uh, community, but that we're, that there's other communities and, um, and that we're part of those other communities, whether we like it or not. For instance, the galactic community doesn't say, oh, well, there's the galactic community, but then the little bitty earth over there, no, that's not part of it. Like, no, that, that's <laughs> earth, you know, it's separated. It, right. <laughs> then from, from that perspective, seeing the humans as one race is not difficult. Like, they're, you know. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so actually that's the key for the people on this planet to realize their common goal, right? To collaborate really unify. well. Yeah, to that unify. Unify goal and then get intergalactic with it. Yeah. And my question was, if we realized this intergalactic collaboration that we already have, we had it for years of time. Like look at the pyramids if you don't think <laughs> we're if you don't think we're helped now let's like rewind to the pyramids and the other megalithic structures that were given to us for free energy yes uh, there's lots of evidence of having this kind of presence on our planet for a long time, long time. and and you don't need to you don't need to like do some esoteric re you know <laughs> uh, no research stuff. Or you don't have to, you know, take ayahuasca in the jungle in South no, America no. for a month you, no. you, to come to those conclusions. It's pretty straightforward. It's straight up engineering. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's lots of evidence in history. There's definitely lots of evidence in current history, um, you know, in meaning in, in the last few decades. And there is no doubt that yeah. uh, a civilization of advanced capabilities has been present on our planet for a long time and that um, that we are being monitored uh, and helped it, it, yes along and the way and helped yeah mm -hmm. and so you know the the mere miracle that the atmosphere of the earth is still there is just like mind-boggling for instance like when you oh, look how at is it coping with us so that's the question so the question was if we collaborated better if we were more open to collaborate to with these helpers mm -hmm. let's imagine together how would this planet look like and what would our technology look like and what mm -hmm. would our health look like and our even view on our lifestyle and bodies yeah. and everything else. Like I was talking yeah. immaculate oh, yeah. conception with M Margaret Rigolioso the other day, all the non-human DNA children that are on earth, our species could skyrocket. So right. I well, love to DNA, hear DNA itself for humans is pretty much looking like GMO at this point. Absolutely. <laughs> from the galactic community. Um, mm -hmm. And I can say that with confidence. Uh, on my side, I have Nobel Prize winners that will that tried to tell us the same thing in 1972, I believe. It was, mm -hmm. you know, Francis Crick, uh, the guy that, you know, discovered DNA, <laughs> yes. like one of the best geneticists that concluded at the end of his life that the earth and its environment had to have been seeded by an advanced civilization. Um, so, area, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, this, so yeah, I mean, viewed from that perspective. Okay. So, so now I want to address something because what you were saying is not um, the way you were saying it. Um, a good portion of the population would be terrified, right? So they, they um, okay. meaning that like, uh, you know, one can have an idea that, oh my God, we're gonna open to the galactic community. Who knows what they're gonna do, right? They, uh -huh. they might invade, they might, you know, like they might control your mind, you, they might, you know. And so, um, <laughs> you know, so the, the part that's, hard to overcome for instance that i've had you know significant experience um 
of in 35 years of trying to bring this information forward, of bringing this information forward, um, is that um, the idea, like fear is a very powerful uh, tool that's, that's common in our society. I mean, it's the source of most of the difficulty in, in, uh, in uh, collaboration is a massive amount of fear of, mm-hmm. you know, which is justified from, um, from, um, from experiences, you know, traumatic experiences of the evolution of, of, of consciousness on this planet. And so, uh, and, and that's the thing with fear is more you have it, more the elements that will convince you that you should be scared are going to occur, which will produce more fear, which will produce more events that will confirm that you should be scared, you know, and so on. attraction. Yes, it's a self, like all systems in the universe, it's a feedback, feed forward system. And so, but however, it's a choice, right? It's a choice. And so, so I want you to like consider the choice that you're making relative to the galactic community, right? Which is definitely a choice that clearly the military industrial complex took early on. Well, you know, just by sense of defense for the planet, you know, strange objects showing up in restricted air spaces is something that for them is considered a problem. Um, So so not with any judgment on it, but I'm just saying um, uh, when, uh, when we interact, we have to keep in mind that um, uh, our energy, like how we, how we interact with that community is going to dictate how we perceive them. So for instance, if they had negative intent, they would have taken over overnight. Like if they can come across the galaxy, <laughs> In a we blink of an eye, all yeah. things would be erased. <laughs> yeah, uh, we would, if they wanted to make us slaves or if they wanted our DNA, whatever, they would have like farmed us, right? Like, I mean, they just, you know, the, the, the fact that we, uh, the fact that our genes might have been created by them, right? We could like freak you out and think you, you got farmed, right? Well, Clearly, you know, and there is some evidence that there was aggression from our side. Um, they have been completely like passive in terms of trying to get us like this, for instance, many, many reports of very high level military personnel that saying during the Cold War many times, we tried to launch nuke heads and they canceled that program every time, uh, both on the you know, European side, on the Russian side, on the American side, and so on. And yes. so, and that's why the Cold War was cold, uh, not because we're so mature that we didn't push the red button. Um, and so, um, the, you know, so I, you know, yes, the I'm other sure. thing is that the universe is fail safe, meaning that um a evolution on a planet that is not constructive so so yes the universe are feedbacks and destructive negative feedbacks don't go far in the universe they don't, don't uh, self sustain yes they, they don't self sustain the 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 you know it, it it's literally impossible for it to function over time, over long period of time in space, because they are self-destructive. They, mm-hmm. they decohere instead of cohere, right? So, mm-hmm. so coherent, coherent feedback, though, produce larger and larger and very sustainable evolution. Uh, decoherent, fa- so, so planetary system that have decoherent feedbacks, um, don't make it very far 
they, they run out of resources, they interkill each other, they, you know, they destroy themselves very quickly. Look so, at us. Yes. And, um, and there's evidence that we got babysat in certain ways <laughs> in the background so yeah. that we're still here to talk about it. And I'm just gonna, and, and so what I'm saying is that um, uh, uh, I, the idea that we should, for instance, as many scientific uh, big names that are talking about how we shouldn't reach out the, to the galactic community by France and sending signals in space and all this because they might come and invade. Um, like the concept <laughs> is very limited, for instance, just in terms of logistics, meaning, you know, a civilization that has access to the galaxy, so that would be able to go from one side of the galaxy to us, right? Um, has access to billions and billions of planetary systems. And the idea of like having to fight a, a, a planetary system to have access to resources is most likely just as alien to them as they are to us, right? <laughs> uh, so true. You know, uh, they would have uh access to any resources they could ever think of right like and so taking over little earth down here because we're so smart and we're so interesting and so on is probably not the case but what it appears to be however is that they made a nice little terraforming world and started a evolution to see where it would go <laughs> and to see if it could get into coherent you know advanced state um and uh and become full members of the galactic community and so um i think that uh, that is a better approach and it's based on good logic um again i don't think we would be here talking about it if they had intent that were uh, destructive. Like there's absolutely no reason such thing would happen. So, in other words, we are already collaborating. We have for years been helped, and uh, it's a work in progress. That's what you're. It saying. is work in progress. <laughs> it's been mostly a collaboration one way because one sided. Yeah, yes. one sided. Mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to reciprocate, you know, and uh, and become. Yeah. Uh, more uh, collaborative. I think it would have great interest for all humanity. More um, active in communication. And we've been hearing that one of the best frequency that they respond to is actually the frequency of love instead of the frequency of fear that we're, you know, most of humanity is emitting. What would yes. actually work as communication wave is the frequency of love, has the good result of the thousands of people meditations that have been going on. The last yeah, of years. course, you know, I mean, that's, you know, what we call love is actually coherency, uh, collaboration, connection, you know, um, we like openness, you. openness, Welcome. yeah, outside, okay. yeah, outside of fear, you know, uh, openness, right? If Trust. you're fearful, you're close, if you're you know, loving, you're open, right? Um, you know, you can become, you can be loving and open and have eyes wide open too. You know, like it doesn't discerning. Yeah. yeah, you can be discerning and it and doesn't have, shut off your discernment, is what right. you say. Yeah, it exactly. Yeah. It's it not naive. You, it doesn't fool you to be trustful. It's just a state of openness that what can I, where can I get from here? <laughs> yeah. And and uh, and an openness to like transcend preconceived ideas and ways of functioning and ways of seeing the world. Like worldview is so important, right? I'm reading, a, I'm listening to. A, I I commute for forty minutes every morning, and, and so I I'm listening to an audio book called The Five Personalities, I believe, 
and oh. um, it, it's uh, interesting. Uh, it's made it's made really simple and really clear, but you can see like all the patterning that occurs early on in our lives that are the result of trauma and so on, and uh, our our coping mechanisms, you know that that develop as a result of it, which are based on fear of uh, survival and so on. And so um, this is uh, these are things that we can all work on you know, uh, that make a huge difference because if we overcome them individually, then we can help other people overcome them as well, uh, you know, around us and, and together uh, globally, it makes a difference linearly and non-linear. Um, yeah. So it really is um, a really important part of, uh, of uh, self-development is to realize like how much fear am I running, right? How much fear am I running? And I'm gonna, it's always going to be a percentage. It's never going to be completely gone. Meaning in, in, in certain situations, it, it will be completely gone. In others, it won't. A, a good example, um, because sometimes it's, it's okay to have, uh, you know, fear. Fear is there for a reason. Like it's telling you, okay, there's a danger now. Or you know, yeah. the feedback. Yeah, don't, put, don't put your hand on the oven, for example. That's right, a good right. fear. Yeah, exactly. it, don't put your hand back on. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. problem is because of the trauma we experience, we've, we've generalized the experience and, and tainted what comes to the forward uh, of reality, how we interpret reality as a result. Right. So, for instance, when I was climbing, it was so dramatic. This is why I was a solo climber. Right. Well, there was many reasons, but one of them was that I loved that edge. Right. So I would be thousands of feet up on vertical, you know, in some cases, significantly difficult climbing. And um, any error was fatal. Right. So this is probably, you know, the ultimate fear, like no ropes you know, just my chuck bag and my shoes, right? And so uh, thousands of feet up, you know, the wind, the birds, everything, you know, and the, and, and just climbing and, um, and I could get, and so during my career, and I would do this for hours every day, like I would, I would run up uh, climbs 30, I would climb 30 to 40 pitches, in an hour and a half because I didn't have ropes. I didn't have anything. I was just, I was just running up the mountain. Uh, and, and so there was moments though, like for instance, one instant where it started raining and, you know, polished granite, I was in Squamish, punished, punish, polished granite that's wet mm -hmm. is like ice skating, ice. right? Ice, yes. Yeah. So, now my shoes are not sticking, my hands are slipping, and I'm actually below the Crocs, which is a fairly simple Crocs for me because I climbed it a thousand times before. But wet is like, you know, many degrees difficulty higher uh, because it's a little bit overhang and it's mm. like you got to go and reach over and grab, you know, and Doing that when it's wet is like uh, slipping as you're going, right? So you, you had to do that slip move, you know, mm. and hope that you, you didn't slip more than you gripped, you know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, and so those moments are moments where I had the choice. So now I'm sitting there below the Crocs and I'm, you know, burning fuel and burning energy just sitting there and I'm scared to do the move right I, I try a few times I back off I try a few times I back off and I'm like okay I, I like there's no way to do this move securely it's gonna be run for it right or yeah or stay there you know and now so more you more you start thinking about the possibility of you slipping and i'm feeling it right now just thinking about it my hands start sweating right right away your hands start sweating so now it's immediate you get feedback right away that you're you're now sleep slipping even more right mm -hmm. 
and your legs are starting to the shake thing. We call it the sewing machine, right? Like your muscles are starting to cramp up because you're not moving and you're staying there and you're all gripped. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, this, this is a, like a bad feedback you're in now. And the only way to get out of that feedback is to look at this and say, and see yourself at the top, enjoying a well, beautiful day. <laughs> the end of it, yeah. yeah. I've done and, it already. Yeah, it's done. This is I'm how I was way. passing my exams, yes. Yeah, it's done. No more fear, it's gone, right? Forget fear, I'm just going. And mm. then and then you just go and you do the move and you get past it and you, you know, you're fine, right? Um, and, and so that edge is so strong there. Even, you know, if it's not an emergency situation, just free soloing, it's there. Um, you know, uh, that, um, that you, can, you can really feel what is the difference between fear and love, between fear and, you know, be between decoherency and coherency, you know, yeah. and, um, and when you, it's a good reference point, because then in the rest of your life, you can't, every time you feel fear, you can manage refer back to that moment. Yeah. That's right. You can refer back to that moment. And so for me, it was free climbing, but for, for everybody, there's moments like that, that you can go back to where you had that choice to be in fear or to be in uh, open, right? To be closer, to be open and, and, and manage that. Um, and, and then you're going to fail every day. Like, for instance, I'm not going to say what speeds, but let's just say I drive really fast. Hmm. Okay. I was, I was in the car once. I can attest to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice fastest I've ever gone in my life. Nice in to have car. you here, Marshall. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm glad nice to still here. be here. <laughs> Very and, um, and, for, and for me... Clearly not for my passengers, but for me, I'm 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 completely relaxed. Typically, I'm listening to mm, classical music or some nice music or some nice rock, and, and uh, I'm thinking about physics and everything. And everything on the highway is just slow motion because I'm at a different speed, so you know <laughs> it looks like it stopped. And so I'm just mm -hmm. doing like the pinball machine, you know, like going through like you know and and um and it's really um it's really kind of like uh meditation for me yes um and um and in that state it's it's completely i'm like completely safe because i'm like my level of awareness is very very vast in that state like uh, you know it's it's called the zone in in very in you know in extreme sports right when you get into the zone it's like effortless it's like, right? like the car is driving itself like it's like right in the future we'll just drive our cars with our consciousness basically we don't have to use yes so much of our attention and skills that's not you know necessary we yeah. already do it's just that it's the the interface is still our muscles our you know? limbs yes yeah, yeah, our limbs, limbs, yeah. which is like prehistory for advanced civilization right. yes. <laughs> people don't realize you know when they drive how psychic they are yes you know uh they don't realize like uh, many you know if you actually pay attention you'll notice that you have all kinds of um uh pre uh precursor or um uh, pre, um, pre I can't remember the exact terminology. Precognitive. Uh, Precognitive pre uh, yeah, mm -hmm. event yeah. while you're driving, yeah. Yeah. you know, where somebody is going to change lanes suddenly and, and you started reacting before they actually did. And, mm -hmm. you know, like all kinds right. of things, like you're actually yes. contributing, you're participating in a minefield when you're going down the six lane highway or, or you're going down the, 
you know, like the, the roundabout in the middle of Paris where there's six lanes and people are crossing mm -hmm. everywhere and it's complete mm -hmm. chaos. And somehow, you know, <laughs> like generally nobody gets hurt. Um, mm -hmm. this, the, there's, a, there's a minefield that's happening, right? Yes. And actually, if you pay attention, the people project their field to the left before actually steering their wheel to the left. Right. So if you pay attention to that thing, you could never bump into someone else because they're already on their lay on your lane when they're right. thinking about it. Right. So you exactly. always know what they're gonna yeah. do. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. So that's how and, it and some of these effects have been measured, right? For instance, you know, it's been measured in laboratory and published that like there's a six second delay uh, in which your body is reacting to an mm -hmm. event that's happening six seconds later, right? So people are sat in front of a, a, a computer mm -hmm. that has random uh, functions in it that mm -hmm. is picking from thousands and thousands of images. And each image uh, brings up very specific hormones in the body, like sexual image, violent image, you know, and so on. And, um, and, uh, and so when you click the mouse, then there's a delay that's unknown. Uh, and and the, during that delay, at one point, the, the computer randomly is going to pick a picture. Um, and uh, six seconds before the computer picks it, you're already secreting the hormones that will be produced by the image that the computer doesn't even know <laughs> like what it Your is. Your body has already reacted to, to the image that's going to come six seconds later it, correct yeah which is remarkable in, in a natural state think about you know you know pe people remote viewing and and uh, guessing things in and, six and, years in advance and there's advance. yeah and there's evidence that that delay can be increased depending um on the state of emotions for instance mm -hmm. people report in accidents. I had multiple accidents um, in the ski industry, climbing industry, um, and in, uh, in car, or, you know, um, and, and um, well, in car only one. So, you know, <laughs> that's good. Keep but, it that way. Yeah, it's good to keep it that way. But um, the, 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 in each case myself, but in many people reporting this, um, just before the accident, like there was a very sharp distinction at one point where time seemed to go completely uh, elongated and everything went to slow motion. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do all kinds of things during that time, which was really like milliseconds, right? but mm -hmm. actually felt like an eternity. Yourself. Yeah. And I had time to do all kinds of things to protect myself. Yes. So that actually I minimize the impact of the mm -hmm. accident on my body. Like I have a friend uh, that uh, was in an accident where, you know, the, 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 uh, the, bag, the, the, the bag deployed, which mm -hmm. is like millisecond, that thing just explodes, right? And uh, he had glasses on and he thought, oh, shoot, that's going to hurt. You know, I, people get hurt because the glasses, you know, mm -hmm. get pushed into their face. And he, he had, you know, the inclination and the time to remove his glasses, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, which is not possible. <laughs> it's, it's just not, you know, so, um, uh, so under normal reflexes. So, you know, so basically um, there is, uh, you know, a thing about consciousness and time that we could get into, but this, that would take too long. So another anyway, session. I would love to. <laughs> Anytime. <Yes. Yeah. laughs> Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to extend time next time. <laughs> yes. yes. <Anytime. laughs> All okay. right. Thank okay. you. That's been a great uh, conversation and perspectives, and uh, I hope we all collaborate better in all areas that we can. <laughs> We're starting right here. Yeah, starting, starting here right, right here. here. And that's why, again, people, if you can become contributing members, that is, or help people, you know, to become contributing members, like make them aware of our website, make them aware mm -hmm. of our research. 
makes a big difference. Okay, Marshall, I you think well. you're wrong, huh? Be well, Christiana. Yes. Thank you, you Marshall. Soon. Thank you so much, Nassim. I promise not to throw curveballs <laughs> unless they're in a good direction. <laughs> Thank you. People love your curve curve uh, curveballs, though. Yeah, they always good. load them up. <laughs> we, we love your answers too. You know, we're looking for. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So always good. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Okay, Nassim. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Ooh, some good stories there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, illuminating and, uh, you know, just good, good perspective to have, especially in these times, because uh, there's so much pushing on us to push us into fear. So to really think about how can we catch ourselves and, like you said, envision what's past that right. point and, uh, and the place and, we want to be. That. Hold yes. that incoherence inside of our minds and our hearts and our emotions really is the key, you know, and that's why uh, we do what we do here. So we can uh, have a framework for that, not only to be, you know, conceptually possible, but literally possible and that our minds can conceive of that as an outcome. So uh, that's, yeah. that's so important. Yeah, it's critical. Yeah, it's critical. I mean, it's probably the first thing that somebody can do at this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, right at, at uh, wake up time, you know, mm -hmm. is to get into the framework of a pro positive mm -hmm. feedback loop for your day. You yeah. know, it's like, I'm not gonna let the fear take over, <laughs> you know, no yeah. matter what, no matter what, news i get no matter what i read on the internet no matter what i like i'm not gonna approach any of today with fear and you're gonna fail but it, 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 there's but if there are if, moments yeah if most of the moments you're outside of fear then yeah. you're winning yeah, you know? yeah exactly you're winning individually and you're willing for the world yeah yeah you're helping to bring that coherence into the continuous state in the world as right. much as possible. Yeah, exactly. Beautifully said. All, All right. right. Thank you so much, Nassim. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on Zoom, as always, and on YouTube. Thank you for all being here. And uh, yeah, please uh, put out the word for membership. We really would appreciate ongoing support. And it's not a lot, five, 10 bucks a month, something like that. It makes a huge difference for us and keeps our research going and keeps these sessions going. So. Yeah. Thank you all. Be well. Take care, Nassim. We'll talk to you uh, in a month. Yes. All right. If Goodbye. Before. Bye. We'll talk before. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.